Hey everyone, Darkwell here, and welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be the four position tier list for patch 7.35c, and like I said before, I think on the offlane one, you know, if we're seeing this video, if it's actually coming out, I don't think there's a patch, unless there's a patch next week, which would be kind of funny, but regardless, uh, I think if there's not a patch this week or next week, we probably will have this patch around for a little while, until the next patch comes, I think that's going to be kind of a big patch with like maybe a new hero and stuff, and and stuff and who knows map changes you know you never know but in any case let's just jump into this tier list which is going to be for you know average pubs that's kind of how i've been doing it the last couple times just to break it up a little bit obviously i'm not like a 10k mmr player either so i mean i just be basing that off stats so what does my opinion matter there but i think i can give a good opinion for you know the average pubs so anyway let's just jump into s tier which is tiny this here is just like the best melee four position i think right now um, sometimes it's like Earthshaker, sometimes it's Earth Spirit. Tiny's just really good. Uh, you're mainly going to be playing around, obviously, Avalanche and Toss, but especially early on Toss, you're going to want to make sure that you are using your positioning and this ability to, like, toss people, toss, you know, the five position into your offlane hero so that you can team up on them and kill them. You might want to roam mid, all that typical stuff that Tiny does. And honestly, the thing is, is just this hero gets really tanky and does a ton of damage with just a few levels. Like, and then you get Blink early, you almost play this like a mid Tiny, but just from the four position. Uh, and that's just literally how you play the hero. I don't think there's anything super special that the hero's doing that it like didn't do before. Or there's no like new crazy ability that just changes the dynamic of the hero. I think it's pretty much just Tiny. And just a lot of other things have kind of been getting nerfed over the few patches. Tiny's just kind of been steadily and slowly raising up to the point where I think this is just a really good four position right now. Um, and the win rate's pretty good. I think just overall, especially if you're going to learn a four position uh, at like average MMR, that just does a ton of damage, is super tanky, can initiate. Like you can carry games with tiny four position. And if you can learn to play him and not be completely useless, you know, just walking around doing nothing in the lane, then you can just be super effective with him. And I think he's really good for that because you just do so much damage. You turn into another core for sure. So that's tiny. Next, we have Hoodwink, and I think Hoodwink was, like, kind of recently nerfed, or is definitely going to at least be nerfed soon, and this hero, you literally play carry Hoodwink from four position. I mean, that's just straight up, you literally buy, like, Deso, well, no, you don't buy Deso, but you buy Blightstone, like, first item. I mean, you could buy Deso, I guess, but you buy Gleipnir, that's, like, your first item. Uh, you maybe even buy, like, I've seen people buy, like, Manta and stuff, like, it's kind of ridiculous. You just go these, like, straight up carry items from the four position, and you're still effective, because you have your stun, you know, you have your escape, you have your ultimate, which is good for a slow and all that kind of stuff. You have all these things that you already have in your kit. So the items that you get, you know, you're not really good with a blink. You don't really need a four staff or a glimmer because of the scurry. So why would you buy these support items? I mean, maybe you could buy like solar crest and things like that. And that's still a possibility, but let's be honest. If people in like immortal bracket are buying carry items on this hero, just buy carry items on the hero because one you're not going to get flamed for doing it which is honestly half the reason that you don't buy carry items on supports is because you just get reported and people just give up i mean that's literally the reason that you don't do it otherwise i'd say pretty much do it all the time but i mean there's obviously some utility but the team fighting utility of glimmer and force is not nearly as good when your team sucks and they don't know what they're doing and they can't cast their abilities so in any case this is just such a good hero because of that i mean we even see over the last year because of the map expansion all the different things that have happened to the game that four position has become like another core we saw um where to playing four position all the time and she was just building straight up core items and just like doing damage like a core becoming like almost a carry from the four position and hoodwink is just the new version of that except you all offer a little bit more utility and like a stun and things like that than uh than muerta did back a few patches ago so anyway that's hoodwink it's pretty much just that straightforward like this hero is just really good with carry items it's pretty straightforward to build them that way i mean you can go atos first rod of atos and that's kind of also a stun as well. So it's not like you're just like completely griefing your team by going Maelstrom first and that kind of stuff. And then you do insane damage. Like later, I've seen people get like uh, Daedalus and stuff. And then you are just sitting back in the trees, being hard to kill, stunning people, and then just shooting an acorn shot out and just like deleting supports or even doing insane damage to carries and mids and stuff like that. So that's Hoodwink. Again, a hero that hasn't really, there's nothing super special about the hero in the sense that like it's not having this crazy new change of ability. It's just that, Everything else has kind of been, been getting nerfed, and this is really, like, the emerging carry from the four position. I mean, people have figured out that Boomerang is actually good, where I feel like people weren't really using it when it first came out. But the Ags is, like, absolutely terrible. Like, who uses this anymore? But in any case, that's Hoodwink. It's really not more complicated than that. 
And then we have Lion, who actually recently got nerfed. He's kind of fallen off a little bit compared to what he was like a patch or two ago. But that's like saying like, you know, the best hero in the world forever, the most insanely broken hero just got a small nerf. And now it's like, oh, this guy's a little bit worse. And yes, at the higher levels, it's not getting played as much. But I think that's a little bit of like an overreaction. A lot of times when things get nerfed like that, people just like stop picking it because they're like bored of it and they kind of want it to get out of the meta in the first place, which is definitely true with this hero because it is so freaking annoying. This hero is literally just Pugna now because of how they changed mana drain. So they did nerf this a little bit. Uh, but it's still very, very good. I mean, the range isn't as good for different things and all that kind of stuff. And the vision, you know, if you lose vision now, I think it breaks the, the secondary targets and all that kind of stuff. So yes, it's not as good. But that even is like secondary to the fact that you're doing damage with it, which is good. And really that you're able to fill up other people's mana with it is just ridiculous. I mean, that just helps so many different kinds of heroes. It's just limitless. Like there's there's very few heroes in Dota that just like don't care about mana. Like... I can't even really name any off the top of my head. I know there are a few that just, like, the mana pool is too good. I mean, like, OD, for instance. That's a good one, I guess. Like, OD cares about mana, but not mana pool in terms of, like, you know, they're never gonna, you're never gonna use mana drain on OD because OD just automatically gets the mana back from using abilities. But, like, there's very few of them, and this here is just so good in lane, being able to drain the enemy's mana, do a little bit of damage, slow, obviously, and then, um... Refill up your carry, refill up your core, all that kind of stuff. You can go mid, help them out with mana a little bit, because obviously they're going to be buying bottle and getting runes, but sometimes they might be mana starved if they're farming extra in the jungle and all that kind of stuff. And then middle of the game, you know, you're draining a creep after a team fight, and then you fill up your cores because you're pushing high ground. It's just so good for all those kinds of things. And then, honestly, just standing in a fight and draining some of these heroes' mana that have low mana pools, like, like a centaur, for instance, or something. I mean, I personally don't like centaur a lot because I think he's a little bit useless, but imagine then you just... You know, you cast one ability and then you have this BKB lion sitting in the back just like draining, you know, sucking all the mana out of you and now you're just like, okay, great, now I just have no impact. I can, I guess I can run around and just be tanky and just wait for my whole team to die. And that's just what happens, I feel, with like a lot of these strength heroes that have no mana is lion just removes all their mana and removes mana from like half the team anyway and just like, what are we supposed to do against this hero? So even though it did get nerfed, I still think it's really good and it's not going to be countered in the ways that it was nerfed. Like, it's not going to be as bad as in the higher levels it was kind of, you know, it's fallen off but like at your average mmr pub like this hero is still completely broken because it has all that utility but if you think about it the stun the hex these are still very very good parts of the hero i mean this hero has always been fundamentally good the problem was just like compared to let's say um Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman has this utility of being able to push, where this guy's just like straight damage. And that was a little bit awkward, because this ability sucked, like nobody cared about it. This ability was a little bit just all focused on damage, and then you had these two stuns, which was fine, but it was these two abilities that were bad. And now, because Mana Drain, the worst ability that he had, is like probably the best ability, with the shard and everything especially, it just completely changes the dynamic of the hero. And so that's Lion. That is different than Hoodwink and Tiny, I think, because, um, these two heroes, obviously nothing really changed. This, the reason why Lion's here is because a lot of things changed. It got a lot different and it's way better. And then lastly, we have Nyx Assassin. And honestly, I put Nyx Assassin up here, not because I think it's like amazing in higher levels or people are playing it a lot, although they are. I mean, it is getting picked a decent amount. It does, I think, have a pretty good win rate. But it's more that I think especially at lower MMRs, especially where people don't, you know, sit behind their cores in the jungle. They don't ward like everywhere when there's a Nyx assassin in the game. I mean, maybe they do it a little bit, but not that much um, where it's not that punishing, you know, if you don't have very much impact, because let's be honest, even though Tiny is a melee, you know, Earthshaker's a melee for all that kind of stuff, they're going to have more impact than a Nyx. Like you just don't do anything for the first like 10 minutes of the game. It just, it feels really bad. Uh, now you can trade and you do have good HP regen, but that's kind of like the only only plus that you have otherwise you're just kind of useless you just have a stun but then once it gets into that mid late portion of the game you just can delete cores like any kind of squishy core if you can jump on them you know get the jump on them with a high mana pool especially they are just dead they're completely dead you go straight dag on this hero you know like you kind of do play carry from the forward position with nyx because you're not going any support items you're just going straight up damage and you're deleting people off the map off cooldown because no one's buying sentries at three or four k mmr or whatever mmr you are it's like just no one's buying sentries like come on no one's camping behind their uh carry waiting for you to go on them and then having dust available and killing you like, that's just not happening uh let's be honest so this this hero can just solo win games straight up from the four position. So that is the S tier. I think these heroes are all just the best heroes to pick because they all have a lot of utility or just straight up win the game for you. And then next we can move on to, also I didn't like go into this guy. I don't really know why, but here we go. Here he is. And then 
Next we have A tier. So Dark Willow, I think, is like sort of a discount hoodwink. Pretty good. It just doesn't really scale in the same way. Um, it's not as easy to get into those scaling items. You don't do as much damage, but I definitely think you can get to that Ag's timing, especially if you're, you're having a really good game, and then you just become core. At least straight up. You just have Ag's, and people are just like, wait, this is a four-position Dark Willow, and they're just, like, deleting me. They're just, like, deleting the carry, just deleting the mid, and it's just absolutely ridiculous what you can do with this hero if you get farm. And I think you can reliably get that farm. Now, Obviously, you're not a very good farming hero, but you can definitely participate in a lot of kills. Like, hopefully, you have some kind of teammates that are trying to get kills, and it's not just like a five kill to seven kill game at 30 minutes or something like that. But for the most part, even if that is the case, I think you can kind of get some farm, and you're going to just, I mean, even rushing eggs, like, who gives a crap? Just like do it anyway. Um, and that's really Dark Willow in a nutshell. And then Techies. Techies was really good six months to a year ago. He was, like, broken or whatever. They were picking him all the time. Then he got nerfed just here and there, like, numbers overall. I don't think anything crazy happened to him. It was just overall damage nerfs and stuff like that. And I think he fell off a cliff. Like, people just stopped picking him altogether. But I don't think he actually was that bad. And now that things have evened down a little bit more, I don't know if he maybe got a couple buffs here and there or something over the last few months, over the last couple patches. He's kind of risen back to that high tier, and he's doing a lot of the same things. I've actually seen him picked a lot um, at higher Mars. I think even the pros have been picking him a good bit too. So, you know, I think he's still very good. He wasn't nearly, you know, he's not nearly as broken as he once was, you know, six months ago, a year ago, whenever that was, but he's still very, very good, very reliable, just another high damage hero. And he does kind of carry from the four position, but just not in the same way some of these other heroes do. Like he's all about that magic damage. And uh, his stun is also not as good as I think it once was and things like that. So he's just, he's not as powerful, but still very powerful. Then next we have Spirit Breaker. This hero, I just don't think you can underestimate the impact that this hero can have in the right game if you know what you're doing. And the fact that you can farm now, even though it's not as good as it once was because you used to be able to very easily clear creep waves with the, with the charge and the bash, you can still do that. It still is possible. And so because of that, I still think you can get your farm. You don't just have to be this useless nothing hero when your team's not ganking or you're not fighting. Um, you can still get your farm and then get your items and transition into this like second off laner. Like that's definitely possible. And you can have impact more than a lot of melee four positions. Like it's just a lot easier to have impact with this hero early on in the game than like than even Tiny or you know Earthshaker and those kinds of things. So that's Spirit Breaker. But again, nothing super special about the hero. Just kind of the same hero as it's always been. Shadow Shaman, similar kind of thing. I think. This hero was probably like S tier for a little while, then I think it got nerfed a little bit, or maybe it did get buffs, I don't know, or maybe it was just kind of A tier, I can't actually remember the last few patches, I do think it was pretty good though, I saw people picking a lot, but um, actually I think it got buffed recently, or one of the times, oh yeah, with the damage increase on, um, on, the, uh, on the hex, so actually this hero I think is on the up and up, um, I just think maybe maybe it was a year ago or whatever that it was really good or something like that. But anyway, it is on the up and up because that damage buff for the Hex is... is you can't count that out. It is a lot, actually. And then I just think dy it's a dynamic hero. You have all these little things. You have two stuns. You have a decent farming tool with your shard and your um, your nuke. And then obviously you can't underestimate your pushing ability. And I've seen players like win the game 1v5 by split pushing with this hero, which is kind of funny. I've done that a, a few times too. I just think for now, it's kind of a discount lion in a lot of ways. These heroes are often paired together and lion is just really good right now. And obviously lion's getting nerfed. This guy's getting buffed a little bit. So who knows? They might switch places. Then next we have bounty hunter. I think bounty hunter is kind of like a discount Nyx. In other words, I would I'd rather pick Nyx just because of the burst all-in-one, like you just delete a hero kind of damage, where this hero sort of does that, but you need to be a little bit more sneaky, you need to kind of go in the back lines, you need to be a little bit more wary because you're not bursting people down, you're kind of wearing them down over time with your, um, you know, just your spamming out of abilities and kind of hunting down supports, and you can be very effective at doing that, but it's a, I feel like it's just a little bit more risky to play this hero and like to feed than it is even with this hero even though you're invis it's just i don't know it just feels a lot worse because you're not just like committing that one time like if you find a guy pick him off and then just you're done you're out you're escaping this guy has to be around more just play in and out a little bit more which is a little more dangerous but you can have a much better laning stage because you're going to spam your abilities more you're going to just right click the carry and just like steal all his gold and make him have a horrible lane. Um, that's just going to happen a lot more with Bounty Hunter, so it's a little bit more of a... I think it's just a worse Nyx Assassin, but it definitely is pretty good and has its strengths that Nyx Assassin has weaknesses as well. 
And then we have Gyro up here, mainly because I think this hero's brain dead, and it's just like, hey, you want to do magic damage like a Techies or some other hero or like Tiny? It's like, well, hey, just pick this guy, and you don't even have to be good at anything. Like, you can't, you don't even have to think with your brain. You just have to think with your gut. You just have to be like, oh, I'm dumb Gyro, man. I just click button on hero, missile come out, and then I click other button to make other, like, you know, rocket barrage come out, and that's all you do. And then with the upgrade or, like, the change to his ult, that can be pretty good, decent impact in fights. And so, um, yeah, it's just like a brain-dead hero, and you can farm, you can get uh, items on the hero. I just also think that people don't know how to deal with the missile. Like, the lower the MMR you go, the more people just, like, I don't know, they see a missile coming at them, and they just start, like, having a panic attack. <laughs> and then they just, they run away from it, which you obviously want to run away, but then it's, like, getting close to them, they're, like, still running away and just taking insane damage. I don't know, I've just seen people, even at, like, higher MMRs, uh, just die to the rocket when it's like, dude, you could have totally lived if you just did, if you just actually let yourself get hit by the rocket earlier, you could have totally lived, but you just decided not to and just died. It's just funny, that'll happen. I guarantee you that happens a lot more at lower MMRs. And then we have Pugna. Right now, it's kind of funny because Pugna's pretty good, but it's just like a discount Lion. Like, to be honest, it's just not as good as Lion because it just does what Lion does, but just not as well. It's obviously a very good save against Faceless Void where Lion doesn't do that, so it does have pluses. I just think it's like almost like a more difficult hero because you have to play around your other abilities and kind of know when to go in and where to position yourself, where Lion is just way more effective because it does a lot of similar things these days, but then it has two stuns. And so that's really like the difference here. Um, otherwise, Pugna has been pretty strong for a while. It's like sometimes it gets nerfed and it drops off, and then it slowly creeps back up into the meta. Then we have Shadow Demon. The reason why this hero is so good right now is because it's really all about countering the good, you know, heroes in the meta, like Faceless Void and like some of these other heroes where you put the purge on them and it really, really negatively affects their mobility and all that kind of stuff, and they take more damage in the save, and then also spawning illusions of some of these heroes is also really good. So this hero, I think, is matchup dependent in a lot of ways, that's why it's in the meta, that's why I didn't put it S-tier, because probably this hero should be S-tier in a lot of ways, but I'm putting it down here because I still think it's really effective, and the other thing is, honestly, I'm even tempted to put a B-tier, because, like, I just don't think very many people play this hero well at, like, middling MMRs, but if you can get good at it, I think it is very good, like, you can have a ton of impact with this hero, it just... Really, I would be careful picking it because you can just feel useless a lot of times if you don't know what you're doing. But in like the true sense of who, you know, what heroes are good this patch, oh, this is almost like an S tier hero. It's just because I think it's S tier at high MMRs. I think it's like B or C tier at like low MMRs. So I'm going to put it at A tier to kind of even out the middle of the pack. But nothing super crazy about Shadow Demon that I know that's like different or anything like that. I mean, I know they kind of changed the hero like a while back, but I just never play it because it is one of those, not high skill cap, but it's just some, if you're not coordinating with your team and you don't have the right save mentality at the right time with the right matchups and all that stuff it just can sometimes feel bad so that's shadow demon just not a hero i love to play then Earthshaker discount tiny um really just that simple i mean tiny just has a lot more damage early on um tiny doesn't really necessarily rely on the blink dagger although it's nice to have um Earthshaker relies on the blink dagger a lot more um is the toss is more annoying than the fissure although it can be still annoying it's just a discount tiny in a lot of ways i just don't think you're going to be doing as much damage you're going to be doing more damage against certain lineups certain uh you know when they group up and stuff like that but uh i think it's overall pretty good it's also good at low mmrs for just the different things that you can do and carry the game and stuff like that but overall um like i said discount tiny and then lastly, we have Batrider here. So Batrider is almost like Shadow Demon in the sense that this is like a high MMR support that's like stomping games and being super annoying and playing like a typical Batrider, but just from the forward position. So where Batrider used to be an offlane or a mid and do all of those things from those positions now because you're getting hoodwink carry and you're getting all these heroes that are like buying carry and, you know, just damage items and all that kind of stuff from the forward position. This is just becoming that same thing but just with utility and so because of the utility of it even though i think it should probably be s tier it's just not something where you're going to straight up carry the game so in most lower like extremely low mmr it's like b -ish tier maybe c tier but that's why i'm putting it you know uh in a tier because i think it's kind of middle of the road there and if you do get good with this hero if you know what you're doing and you can actually play it and you can stomp with it and you know your limits you know when to do firefly how to you know, actually hit your um, concoction or whatever it is, the uh, the uh, cocktail 
the Molotov cocktail thing. If you know how to hit that and actually position people better instead of like just griefing your team or griefing yourself, which I feel like a lot of lower MMR players will do, then you can actually be really good at the hero. But um, just keep in mind, it's kind of in that same way where there is a bit of a skill gap or a skill that you need to have with it, a certain comfortability with understanding what to do and also just like using your lasso around your teammates too. Because yes, you can get solo pickoffs with it, but especially as a support, you're often relying on your allies to help you out when you're doing the lasso. So that's Bat Rider. We're not going to talk about that guy in the corner. You understand. Just stop it. No, it's a high MMR thing. Stop it. Don't do it. Don't do it because I'm going to report you and everyone else is going to report you too. So just don't do it. Then we have B tier. This guy also, I'm going to report you if you pick this because I hate this. This is annoying. Get this hero out of the support. Change it back. Stop. I don't know why you did this Ice Frog. Like, why did you change this to have the damage on the Sprout? It's getting extremely annoying. I'd rather have it be a core. I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is kind of cool that this is a support. It's just such an awkward, weird hero now. Like, why does it have to do this? And I hate... Here's the thing. When this hero is on the enemy team, I swear they're just ganking every lane, just winning the whole game, just being super annoying. When it's on my team, they they run in, they feed, they do nothing. Everyone buys Quelling Blade, and it's like, ha, you did nothing. You had no impact. That's just like what Nature's Prophet does. It's just one of those heroes that you hate to play against, but you hate when it's on your team. So I think that... I put it B tier because to be honest, I mean, maybe it's even, it did get nerfed actually recently, but maybe it's A tier, maybe even like it was S tier before, but I just don't love it at low MMRs. And the thing is, that's kind of counterintuitive because you would think I would like this as kind of like a carry hero-ish from from the four position, but it's not really the same as these other heroes that have some reliable stun, some other way of affecting the game in a, a, in a, a traditional way where this guy's just straight all in and like, I'm just playing carry and... Yes, the Sprout is like, I mean, I guess that's sort of control, but it's not really. Like, people get what is going on now. It's not really control. And you're just going to grief games unless you know what you're doing. Because if you know what you're doing on Profit Support, you're probably good at the game already. And you're not low MMR. Let's just be honest. Then I put Weaver here because Weaver is actually probably lower on the list. He's probably even like D tier in pros, but he's another one that's like a discount carry from the four position. And so that's why I'm putting him here. Really because, um, yeah, I mean, it's just... Straight up that simple. I think he's okay. I think he's pretty decent. The bugs are still okay. It's like, it's not as broken as it once was, but it's still pretty good. Now, I wouldn't go like straight up full carry items, maybe. Like, I would still maybe go Solar Crest or something or do a little bit, even though that's been nerfed for how the hero plays. But um, I would, I don't know what the, exactly the build is, but I'm probably not going like straight Deso or something. I'd probably go with the like um, similar Hoodwink kind of build. And then we have Muerta, just another one, same kind of category, just fallen off a little bit. Hoodwing's kind of replaced her as that carry from the four position, but uh, still very good for all the same reasons that it used to be good. And then Marcy is another one that just kind of like these other heroes where it has that stun, it has the utility, but you can just be that carry from the four position that you, um, you know, you want to be with how the meta is developing. And then Tusk I just put here because he's a little bit of an odd one out. He's kind of that maybe discount earth shaker tiny all the way down it's kind of one level even lower than that a little bit um but he do he does have a lot of impact he can be threatening in lane people i feel like at lower mmrs just don't understand how to play against this hero and that's that's really the biggest thing otherwise i'd probably put him c tier at like high mmrs i don't think he's that good i don't really see him pick that much but i think he just can honestly wreak havoc at low MRs. People just don't get what to do. They just, like, get trapped in the ice shards. They just, like, get hit by his um, slow, you know, right-click damage uh, tag team ability, and just uh, they just melt people. Like, his laning stage is insane, and later on in the game, he can be pretty effective. He has a save, which is good as well, even though that's the thing. It's not the best save against things like Chronosphere, but it is there if you do need it, and that kind of stuff. And then we have Venge. Venge is all about just, like, getting that Ags. And if you can get that Ags, you can get the farm, even though you're not the best, and they've um, they've nerfed her since she was broken. She's still relatively good, pretty reliable, just like not as good as some of these other heroes. Like I'd rather have a lion, rather have a shadow shaman, rather have some of these other heroes, but this hero is still pretty good for all the reasons that it used to be good um, since they upgraded the wave of terror and stuff like that. And also has a save. That's the thing, another good save with swap. Um, it's just that I feel like a lot of times, especially at, you know, your average MMR, I don't know, are you really going to swap save people effectively? Not because maybe even you are bad, but because your teammates are terrible. And like, yeah, you're saving somebody, but they were out of position to begin with. Or you're swapping an enemy in, but, you know, your team's not really following up with their abilities correctly. So it's just very, very focused on team play, which I never really like the lower uh, MMR you go. 
And then Murana, just middle of the road average. I think you can pick this hero. You know, the invis is always going to be powerful when people don't know how to buy dust or sentries. But other than that, it feels like you just have low impact. Like, I'd rather pick other heroes that have, you know, the stun is just so unreliable and you're not really doing much damage. You're not farming well. You are escapable. But, like, why would you pick Murana when you can just pick Hoodwink? You know, just think about it. They both have escapes. Um, yeah, hers is more of like this invis ultimate, which is a little bit more effective, but this ultimate's good damage. This, the stun is way more reliable and you're doing carry damage into the late game that Murana's just like not really doing. I mean, I guess you could, you could skill in the same way or build the hero with the items in the same way, but it just feels a little bit awkward. And then Phoenix is in the middle here because, um, it's not always super popular, but I think it can be very, very effective. It can be very good. If you know how to play Phoenix, if you're a Phoenix enjoyer, a Phoenix player, and you're an expert in this. Uh, you can just destroy games with it. Again, it's one of those heroes that's similar to Venge in the sense that it is all about that team play, so that's why I don't love it as much, but you can stomp games with this hero if you are able to play around your team and you can effectively you know, use Egg at the right time in the right position. You can just completely win fights like and games just by yourself with this hero. Um, so you can straight up carry games just in a little bit of a different way and more of a team fighty way than some of these more like right clickers uh, that are more popular these days. So that's B tier. Next, we're going to move, move on to C tier. And C tier is still pretty viable, but just not the best. We have Snapfire falling off a lot. I love the hero, personally. I think it's actually a really good hero at lower MMRs because you just farm very quickly because you have a great farming ability. The cookie is still really good with the shard, and your ultimate can just never be counted out. The problem is you just kind of fall off a little bit later, and, you know, that's the only thing. It's like, I love that you can get a lot of farm, but then... You just don't do as much once your ultimate isn't as good. Now, once you hit 25, that can be really good with your ultimate. And yeah, maybe even late, 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 like ultra late game, you can scale into the late game by buying actual right-click items, although that doesn't really happen on support too much. But I just think overall, this is a good hero to learn if you want to have impact. I think it's just a well-rounded support, like at all stages of the game, um, except for like the super late game. And also, it's just like easy to play, easy to get your farm, easy to have good impact on it. So it's a good support. If you just like don't know what support to pick and you feel like, oh, they're too complicated or I don't really know which one's reliable, uh, I think Snapfire is a good one. Now, the problem is like Lion and Shatter Shaman are just better in the sense that like they might not have as good of a farming ability, but they just have more reliable stuns and ways to impact the game than Snapfire. Then Ricky, kind of like a discount weaver. I'm actually putting, putting Ricky up here. Only because this is an average pub tier list. Otherwise, it'd be almost like D or almost F tier, to be honest. But I feel like you can get away with this hero. Um, and if you can get away with it, you will stop games. And that's kind of similar to Clinks. Like, Clinks is a little bit grief, but it's kind of the same thing where, like, if you can get away with it and you can knock it reported, you will stomp games. Now, I honestly almost would think for low, low MMRs, like you can put clinks even higher than this. Like you could really actually stomp games with this, but I'm not going to do that because I don't want to like encourage people too much to pick this hero because you can grief games a lot. Like you can have zero impact um, because these heroes don't have traditional stuns and you need a lot of items. And like, again, this hero can be very effective, but there's other heroes like I'm aware to or a hoodwink that like I keep referencing hoodwink, but just like, dude, pick that instead, honestly. Then Grimstroke. Grimstroke's on here because Grimstroke's very good. I think Grimstroke is a great five, but not really a good four. And so that's why it's down here in, here, here in C tier, uh, because it's a great five. I think it's going to be high on the, like probably at least A tier on the five list, but just as a four, doesn't feel as great, not as much impact, um, not really scaling in a lot of these ways. I mean, if you get the ags, sure, but that's like very situational and specific, and that's a lot of farm to get. So I just don't think it's as good for a four position because you don't really have, like you just do what you do with your abilities. That's all you need. You need like some support items. That's fine. That's why you can do it from a, the five position. But it is actually just so good right now that I'm putting it on the list as a four position. Then Dawnbreaker, um, just okay. Kind of tanky strength here, just like even worse version of these other melee four positions and just doesn't scale as well doesn't have all those things you want the save is just not nearly as good as it once was and like yeah sure there's the ags thing but is that really that good i don't know then zeus zeus is kind of in the vein of like ricky or clinks um or even like a weaver or not really weaver because that's like a right click but just one of these heroes that's like you're kind of trying to play mid you're trying to play like the carry from the four position you're kind of grieving your team a little bit but if you can get away with it you can be extremely effective um it's just that the zeus build right now is more like going for that shard and that right click and you definitely don't want to do that from four position but it's definitely viable it's pretty good this hero is decent then earth earth spirit uh, if you are good at this hero, you can definitely play it. It's definitely effective, but that's why I put it down here because I think overall it's actually pretty good. Um, but then since they nerfed the roll to only be on cooldown uh, or only start its cooldown after the roll ends or whatever, 
that just like nerfed the hero into oblivion. But also I think it's lower because you just have to be good on the hero and not very many low MMR players are very good at this hero. And then we have Pudge. Pudge is just decent right now. Probably four is the best you know, support position. I think offlane is his best position right now. Not really as much of a mid, not really a carry at all, and definitely not a five. I just hate him as a five. But four position, he's pretty good. I just don't love him from the four position. He's definitely better as an offlaner right now, but he's always going to be popular, so it is what it is. Then lastly, for semi-viable heroes, we have D tier, and the first one's going to be controversial. This Rubik hero has a high win rate, high pick rate. It's getting picked in pubs, and it probably should even be A, maybe even S. But I'm putting a D. And people are going to be like, no, Warwick is not D. Blah, blah, blah. But here, listen. If you're below like 5K and you play support at all, like if you main support especially, but even if you don't main support, then you're maining another hero, you're not going to be good at Rubik. Like, I'm sorry, but you're not. Because the way to be good at this hero is to play him a lot, okay? And if you're playing him a lot and you're getting good with him because you know which spells to steal and how to position and all the things you do with Rubik, then you're going to climb MMR and then you're not going to be low MMR. But if you're a main Rubik and you're playing him and you're 2.5k MMR, you're bad at the hero. So don't pick it. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but that's just how it is. So that's kind of like a catch-22 in the sense that like, if you're picking the hero and you're good with it and you can gain MMR, you're already going to be high MMR. So it already is going to be S tier for you. But if you are picking it and like, you're just at a normal MMR, you're there because you're bad at the hero or you don't pick it enough, you don't play it enough that you're going to be bad at the hero. So just don't, don't pick this hero. Just stop. Just... You're, it should be off limits to pick this hero below like five or four K. Now, if you haven't played it and you want to play it and you want to get good at support and you're thinking of transitioning to a support role and you want to do that, spam Rubik, get good at Rubik and you can definitely climb. I'm not going to say you can't, especially right now because it is a good hero, but just be warned, you might lose a lot. <laughs> and then Invoker, honestly, I don't know. I want to put Invoker F tier. Like, I don't know. I don't, don't pick this as a four. Just stop it. That hero's not a four position, hasn't been for a while. Keep the Light is kind of a four position, pretty good right now. Actually, kind of more of a mid, but whenever it comes back mid, it kind of comes back support a little bit. So it's decent. Silencer, probably more of a five. I don't know. I just put him here because, like, I think he can actually stomp some games sometimes at low MR. Otherwise, he probably wouldn't even be on the list. He might, like, he's not F tier because F tier is usually, usually re uh, reserved for heroes that it's like, these are not four positions. He definitely can be a four position. It's just that, like, uh, I only put him on here because he kind of does right-click carry type of stuff, but he's just not that great at it. Sometimes it can feel useless. And then Iowa will put on here, again, kind of more of a five, but if you pair him with the right hero and you're good with him, it's definitely possible to pick the hero, but I don't know. And then same thing with Enchantress. I kind of put Io, Enchantress, Rubik all in the same, you know, tier, the same grouping where it's like... <sighs> you're probably just not good at the hero and you probably don't know the limits and you probably can't, you know, use it correctly. So I probably just would suggest not picking it. Maybe get good at the game overall first with other heroes and then kind of graduate to these other things and spam them and get good. Then Venno, just awkward. I just don't like the hero for most people. I think it probably is better than D tier right now overall in terms of like a real tier list for high MMR and stuff like that. But I don't love it because... It just feels bad when you're playing average MMR games and you just can't use this hero to its full ability in the laning stage and mid game because that's when it shines and then it just falls off as a support because you're not buying the items that you need. Um, you're just not getting the farm that you need to actually have impact after 30 minutes. And that's just going to happen every game because your team's not going to coordinate. They're not going to gank. They're not going to push towers. And that's, I mean, maybe one in 10 games they will, but that's not good enough. You're just going to lose a lot on Venno then. And then Primal Beast is just like the even worst version, the worst version of some of these melee fours. And so that's why I put him down here. Definitely, you can definitely pick him, um, but I just I just wouldn't. And then Skywrath, again, worse uh, version of all these other magic damaging, magic damaging uh, four positions. So, you know, like just pick a gyro because there's a stun and stuff. And I'm putting him here because it's like you can still play him, but he's just not been popular for so long. Then Wind Ranger can definitely be played kind of like a discount, like super giga discount hoodwink. So that's why it's down here, but it just feels awkward, not as good, just more of a core and has been for a while. Then Clockwork, I don't want to like discount this hero completely, but it honestly might be so bad and it's just been so bad for so long that I want to put him over there. But I think at lower MMRs, he's better than he is at higher MMRs. Um, just because people get caught in the cogs, people get caught by the battery assault early in lane, they just don't know how to deal with it as much, so you can still pick it. It's just, it just feels bad. And then Doom is here because he's pickable as a support. He's kind of like a, a, a Primal Beast in that way. He's kind of like semi-popular in uh, higher MMRs overall for like offlane and stuff. 
I don't love him as a hero in general for lower MMR uh, games, no matter the role he's in, but you can to you can totally pick him, um, similar to Primal Beast in that way. And then with F tier, I would say I'll just skip to Enigma, because that's kind of a similar thing with Primal Beast and Doom, but it's just Enigma's not as good of a hero, even though people are kind of picking it a little bit more these days, I just don't think it's as good of a hero, and it's just not as reliable, and just a bit of a grief, so just don't pick this. And then Invoker, I said, yeah, it's just not a forward position right now. Dazzle's dead, this hero's dead, never pick it ever, it should just never be picked in a single game ever in the history of Dota. Um, this here is just more of a mid. I mean, I guess you could get away with it, kind of almost like some of these other, just, I don't know, it's just... Who picks this four? No one does that anymore. Just with the builds that it has and the way it plays now, it's just not good. And then I don't even know why. This hero probably shouldn't even be on here, to be honest. Monkey King and Sniper, these are just like carries. Like a lot of these heroes, they just play other roles and they're not good for this anymore. And then, yeah, don't do that thing that you see. I'm not even going to mention it. Stop it. Don't talk about that guy up there, okay? You just you stop it and no. You do not pick this guy in games below like... I don't even get like 8K, dude. You just stop. You don't pick him below 8K. I don't care that you see, you saw whoever, you know, whatever guy do it in the pro game and stop. Okay, how many times do I have to say it before I, you know, if you pick this, abandon, please. Just abandon the game. You know, just click go down, click the abandon button, just leave the game just because you stop griefing us, okay? Thankfully, I've never really experienced this in my games, but I know some of you are picking it. And so, this is just a service and public service announcement just to not do that, please. So, that is my four position tier list for patch 7.35c. As always, guys, if you like the video, like, comment, subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.